And we are live. Yes, we are ready to go. And right now, um, we <laughs> we are all having a little bit of trouble with our connections. Um, I believe Jamie's also having some issues. Uh, Katie and Pops seem to be uh, doing all right at the moment. My connection's going up and down. Uh, and so that we hope that you can see us and you can you can hear us. And I just want to hear from the comments if everybody can, because right now, nothing seems to be working right now. Is everything working your end? Do we have yes, connection? Good. All right, we're good. We're good to go. Excellent. So welcome, everybody, to the Monday Mastermind. And we are glad that you have made it. We've got uh, a jam-packed session here uh, for you today. We never got to finish what we were talking about last week with regards to some of the biggest mistakes we've made in our online business. But before we get into that, <clears throat> I want to um, have a big congratulations for our one and only Katie Stage. Katie and Pops were at an event, and there's a whole bunch of people there, and they were, um, uh, um, you know, going for a prize, and Katie won. Uh, the prize out of everybody, she won the prize, and I believe it's worth over seven and a half thousand dollars. And I just wanted to say congratulations to you and everybody in the comments. Please, I just give Katie and Pops a good congratulations there. So, Katie, I just I just want you to to come out uh, and, and tell us how that event was, and kind of introduce yourself to everybody. Maybe people that people don't know who you are, and go for it. Uh, thank you, Dave. Yes. Um... Um, I was at um, an event just uh, just expanding my knowledge because I just like to do that. Uh, just learning about a lot of things about the industry, which puts me at a better position to teach others how to go the right way, right? And so that whole weekend, we took a, a picture with Noah St. John. Um, if you don't know who he is, I got a big picture here of his face. So you can kind of see who he is, this dude. Um, I listened to one of his audio programs, which was from Nightingale Conant. It's called The Power Habit System. And I listened to about six times uh, in the course of last two years, a uh, no, year and a half, something like that. But anyways, um, an event came up, so Pops and I went. So anyways, I got a picture with him, and he says, uh, whoever shares this the most will win a $7,500 prize. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> so in the end, uh, throughout the whole weekend, I kept reminding everybody, go share this, go share this, go share this, so I can win this. So, you know, but anyways, it's a it's a key here. It's a USB uh, file uh, thing with files in it, and it's called the key to success. It's in the shape of a key. Clever, yes. And it's his vault of um, interviews and um, his elite coaching calls, about te uh, 20 of them. And then there's a whole weekend from 2016 where it was uh, some really high-end people paid a lot of money to get to, and it's videos, video file of um, that whole weekend event. Pretty cool stuff. So um, I'm pretty happy about that, and I dove into it for a little bit, you know, and I, I can't wait to uh, learn some more stuff from this guy because this guy is awesome. So make sure you look up Noah St. John, noahstjohn.com. So go to him and check him out. He is awesome. Thank you, Katie. And I just got to say, first of all, do not drive through any magnets. Back that thing up. <laughs> Make sure that you've got, you know, a way to do that because you obviously don't want to lose that. That's an amazing thing. And just uh, congratulations on that. And yeah, I got to say, you know, we got this great, uh, we got this great team. Uh, that we're all part of and yeah we you know whenever we can we want to help each other out and we've done it on a few a few occasions when you're part of a great team and we're here to to back up each other and that's a wonderful thing uh so congratulations and with that being said let's go to pops and ask him how his experience was with that whole ordeal oh there was so much information that he gave out and so many nuggets um he was covering he normally covers mindset stuff um he had he's he has a registered name a word for uh affirmations as opposed to affirmations affirmations which are instead of repeating in an affirmation that 
you're going to do this or you're going to have this and whatever. He found and discovered that it worked best for him if he would go, if he would say, why is it so easy for me to, why is it uh, really possible for me to blah, blah, blah. And he found that that would create, um, that would create the mechanism for his subconscious to search for why he can accomplish whatever he wants to accomplish. So that's what the power habit, part of what the power habit is about. And um, <clears throat> anyway, he normally would have his, these things about mindset. But then he had said he had uh, clients that would say, you know, we don't need that mindset stuff. We want to know how to make money. So actually, this was the first event that he did that he created mostly and dedicated to how to make money online with some mindset stuff thrown in because that's necessary. As we all know, we get locked up in things. But there was a lot of marketing stuff because he's obviously a marketer. He's been at this for 20 years <laughs> with failures and then successes, of course. And uh, and he is very successful. He has uh, he rubs elbows with a lot of a lot of people, and uh, so it was a lot of a lot of uh, aha moments. And he called them uh, ka-ching moments. He said, "Go ahead if you get some kind of a nugget out of this, just yell out ka-ching," because <laughs> it's all about the money in, in this instance because it was business related. And there was a lot of cool information in his words that would. Um, Come across differently, and well, I had a lot of ka-ching moments, and it was well worth going to see him. Him and his wife Babbitt. Babbitt is his wife's name, and uh, we we didn't say hey Babbitt, not not even once. I did, <laughs> or all oh, Katie did, but she is a she is really a nice lady, and they really did a good job. I would go to him again. Awesome. And uh yeah, man, that sounds like you guys had a really great time there. I'm kind of kind of envious of that that the way you can go to events. That's awesome. And uh um so Jamie, um glad that you've made it. And folks, let me just say Jamie Jamie uh was almost not here, but he found a way to make it happen where he could jump on with us and I believe he's on his hotspot right now. Using data, are you right now? Oh, I have unlimited data, so it didn't matter. Um, but I, I've always had this hotspot for a backup just in case, you know, because my internet goes out occasionally, even though I'm the IT guy. But uh, you can't can't control the ISPs. Actually, our whole town is out, so uh, I'm flying kind of blind because I can't load the the Hangout page. It won't load for some reason, and it's probably because I'm on my hotspot. But other than that. I found a way to get on here, so uh, I'm kind of excited to continue on this topic and really excited for Katie and Pops that they had that experience and Katie got that bolt. She even sent me a free gift yesterday, so that was kind of cool. So, <laughs> Awesome, man, awesome. And I, I just want to say a special hello to, to Andrea. We, we've missed her so much. I know that she's probably been very busy. We're going to hide to – and Andrea, don't forget to get a hold of me. Uh, when you can, I'd like to have a conversation with you. And uh, Joe, we're glad to see you here, along with Robert and Maria and everybody else. Um, in the comments, I'm just scrolling up to see who else is here. If you're watching us, and David, if you're watching as well, because I know David is watching, David Roden is also part of my team. And if you are, just say hi in the comments. We always like to, to see you. And if you've got any questions, um, put them in the comments and maybe we can answer them to you answer your questions but we want to talk about we want to talk about some of the mistakes we've made in our online business to help you in your uh, road to success because I do believe especially you know there are so many things that I've done in the past uh, that I wish I knew I wish I knew for instance that buying traffic at Fiverr was a bad idea <clears throat> because I was naive enough to think that if I went to Fiverr and I saw this little ad that said, you know, get 2,000 hits to your website uh, that you just buy, and, and I, I was naive to think that that could actually work. Um, 
or even uh, you know I, I even bought followers for my Facebook page and I wasn't even aware that it was some some big chain of fake accounts I didn't know all of this stuff and there's so many things uh, that I've done in my business that I wish somebody had warned me about and we want to go over these with you and we discussed them we discussed a number of them last week uh, which was um, and I spoke about in particular I spoke about four things and that was um, number one that I was focusing on uh, distractions rather than my actual business so everything else came up in my life I kind of just went with whatever was distracting me and I never focused on my business um, the other thing I spoke about was that I was blaming everybody else for my failures. So if something didn't go right, I was blaming the system, I was blaming uh, the people, I was blaming my computer, I was blaming inanimate objects for my failure. I wasn't looking to myself. And even though I had a, a very bad computer, slow as anything, was just an overweight calculator, I would still blame uh, <laughs> the object instead of myself. And so that was one of them. And the third one was that I was trying to run uh, before I was even crawling. And that's why I was falling on my face all the time because I was jumping in every program that I could find, trying every strategy before one and owning it and mastering it. Um, so that was a mistake I used to make. And the other one was trying to do absolutely everything at once. I never mastered one thing. I never mastered my... I never got everything set up my business. I never like got up my autoresponder. I never did that. I was jumping from program to program trying to sort everything out. And the number one thing that I want to talk about here, which I missed on last week, and this is one of the mistakes I made in my business, was that I was trying to find free stuff. All right, so I was trying to find as much free stuff as I could possibly find. Uh, for my own business. And I've got to say that there's nothing wrong with something free. But in my experience, when you go for something free, and when I say free now, I'm not talking about, you know, social networking sites or like YouTube or Facebook. I'm talking about free, um, uh, you know, just free training that you find online where you want to turn into an activity where you can actually use for your business sake. There are so many things that we try to find the easiest way to do something. And to be honest, the only way you're really going to learn is if you focus on um, a strategy that actually works out well. And in most cases, it's going to cost you money. You have to learn that part of your experience in becoming a marketer is paying for training. I spoke about this today, actually, in one of my videos, that the only way I really started to move forward was following training that other successful people had actually used. And I said that one of the products that I bought uh, was worth five, well, I was $1,500. Another product which I bought was worth $5,000. Um, and I spent that money on those training programs because I wanted to progress in my business. Every time I was looking for the cheap way out, it would never get me anywhere. And the problem is that I wasn't actually prepared to go and pay money for good product. And everybody here knows, especially on this panel, that when you pay for good product, it actually works out in the end because you educate your mind, you, you start to do things differently than everybody else. And to be honest, if you go for the free stuff, you're actually just not any different to anybody else because everybody is doing that same thing which is free and that's why you want to pay to get good product in your life all right that's one of the mistakes i made is that i was always going for the cheapest freest stuff if you look at someone like pat patterson when he buys a product he buys a product he buys the oto the one time deal after that and then he buys the product after that because he wants everything in one go and that is a in my mind a mind shift when you start to realize that if you want to produce good quality and if you want to become more valuable, you have to pay for goods that are valuable so you can educate yourself. And that was one of the mistakes I made inside of my business. Uh, so if you're on here and you haven't already bought anything and you're trying to get the, the free way out of stuff, 
you're not going to get very far. And even if you've, and this is the irony, okay? I'll tell you this about free free material. Even if you get a highly paid product for free, chances are you won't go through it because you don't see the value in it. When you pay for something, you actually see the value in it. There's a story about a wrestler who uh, wanted to become one of the best wrestlers in the world. And the trainer said, I've got these moves that you can practice, and I've got a videotape at home that you can use. He says, great, can you send it to him? He says, it's going to cost you $200. He said, why? I said, because if you don't pay that money, you probably won't go through it. And he was right. How many, and you know, and, and here's the weird thing, is that a good percentage of people that get products don't actually go through it. But I promise you this, if you pay $5,000 for a product, you're going to make sure you're going to be even more committed to going through that process because you understand that you paid value for that product. That's very important. All right. So with that being said, I want to go over to somebody else on this panel and ask them a lesson they learned that really helped them in their business and a mis mistake they made that they learned from. So let's go to, um, let's go to Pops um, and then we can go down the line from there. When I first started out, um, I didn't do, I didn't take notes. Uh, you know, I'd go to events and I'd, or I'd even watch online webinars <clears throat> and I, and I, I, I listened so intently and it was partly because I didn't want to get distracted by writing and I would get behind on what they're saying. Although now that I'm more accustomed to it, I can catch up or keep up. But I didn't take notes, and I missed out on a lot of valuable stuff by not being able to review my notes. And my handwriting is is bizarre. I really have crappy handwriting because I write so fast; it's all over the place. But I can read it, and that's all that matters. Uh, I was telling Dave a story earlier about at an event where a guy was sitting next to me, and and I was kind of glancing at his notes, and they were they were like cryptic. You know, it was just unbelievable how organized he was with ABCs, one, two, threes, and little notes that he'd write down real concise. And I said, wow, that's that's pretty cool. I can even read that. And I showed him mine, and he went, whoa, <laughs> you know, how can you read that? Well, I can. But I do take notes now. Actually, I'm taking notes now. And um, I, it's very important to take notes at on being able to review, of course, we can't retain all that stuff. It's just not humanly possible. So I missed out on, on being able to review longer than I should have been because of that. Yeah, and, and also if I can just add to that, you know, it isn't just about taking notes for me because I'm terrible at taking notes as well. In fact, I'm the worst. I think I'm worse than Pops. At least he can read his own handwriting. I can't even read mine. It's like child hieroglyphics. It's awful stuff. But one thing I will do is whenever I am like, like now and I'm doing this hangout, I've got a, a, a series of points that I want to go through. Um, four years ago, I would never have done that. I would have just spoken off the cuff without any notes at all. And I got to say that even if you resent taking notes, it is it is important to know where you're going. So every once in a while, you can glance down and understand that there is a direction you're going in. Unless you said the same talk time and time and time again, it's stuff like that that does help you. And believe me, if you want to think that you can just speak off the cuff, because there are people like that that just think that they can speak off the cuff all the time. And even someone as off the cuff as Pat Patterson, uh, I said to him the other day, uh, you know, it might help you to actually write down something so you know where you're going. And he said, yeah, that probably is a good idea. So even for Pat to admit that, you've got to understand it probably is a good practice to take down some fundamental notes at least to know where you're going so that's a very good point pops and uh with that being said we'll go over to to jamie and jamie maybe you can share with us another little uh, mistake that um that you've learned from yeah one of the one of the things i really really messed up on is 
I was always waiting to be perfect. I, the blog post had to be perfect. You know, uh, my Facebook post had to be perfect before I put it out there. You know, I, I mess around in Canva with my picture, you know, thinking my picture had to be perfect, you know, and your marketing techniques don't have to be perfect. You just got to get the content out there. And most of us are more focused on having the perfect blog post, the perfect content out there, the perfect video, you know, well, Everybody wants to go in and edit their video. You know, don't edit your video. Just do it to show you're a real person. You know, leave the mistakes in there. It shows your authenticity. So that's one of the things I struggle with is trying to be perfect on everything when I don't need to be perfect. Yeah, it's it's a and I mean that's a real problem people have, right? It's a real problem when people want everything to be perfect and put out there. And and one of the and and Pop spoke about this last week about procrastination. That you procrastinate, and you don't actually get the job done. And the, the thing is, when you take action, even imperfect action, you're actually getting something done, and you're putting something out there. You don't need to be this hundred percent foolproof, glossy, shiny, perfect thing because at the end of the day the more real you are the more attractive you are to other people and they can see if you look at Diane Hockman's videos um, and I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be ugly here I'm not saying she looks hideous but but she's a mess half the time when she's on those those videos and she's all over the place and it's because she's real and that's what attracts people to her type of marketing style and I'm not taking anything away from people who look professional all the time because maybe they're just that type of person. But the truth is, if you don't take action, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, you can think, I I used to make this mistake about wanting to do a video, and then it never got done because I wanted to be, I wanted it to be everything and, you know, full of information, but I was I was putting it off all the time until I just decided, you know what, it's time to speak and take action, and that actually got me where I was today. So um, that's a very good point, guys, and don't gloss over that. That's a that's a that's a real struggle people struggle with. And even if you're sitting there thinking, "Gee, I can't make my videos great," just go ahead and make the messiest video you can. All right, make the messiest video you can, and just put something out there so people can follow you. I promise you, it will help you. And with that being said, let's go over to. Katie on stage. So, Miss on stage, please share with us one of your blunders. <laughs> uh, it's so hard to even um, pick any of these. Uh, I was trying to kind of go with the theme with you guys are talking about, but um, I don't know if we talked about this last week, so forgive me if I repeated myself. But uh, it's not being value centric to others which means you're in it for yourself because we all do that when we first hear about this kind of industry and being this online and making making money online and firing the boss and all that other uh, stuff but um, you know we, we get in we, we get sucked into that you know that kind of hype kind of thing so we we try it right and so it's we're all about us we're all about you know what could what could this how can I make money and, and all this other stuff so it's really tough and I learned over the years that I have to be value centric to others in order to help them first before I help myself because like what Zig Ziglar says uh, you help enough people get what they want you're gonna get what you want I believe that's how it goes so uh, it was a huge mistake that I made within the first like two like it took me a while two years because I thought that's how I was supposed to market I was supposed to market like everybody wants money and I was supposed to throw these numbers out there and say I can get you this I can get you this when I have never even got it yet right so instead um, I changed my ways and have figured out instead of leading with you can have yada 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 so month and so little time that I've actually led with uh, problems that are actually still out there in the industry I, 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 I realize that it's a continued problem in the industry and I changed it into um, a, a solution and 
I've gotten way better results. Like people are actually listening to me and I don't sound like all the other hypey hoo has <laughs> So it's definitely a life changing realization when you are uh, value centric to others. Yeah, I know value is, uh, value is uh, the key thing there, you know, and, and this is why we tell you to buy good training because ultimately somebody who's good at what they do online is somebody who's actually investing in trading, becoming more valuable to the public so that people will see that you have something of value to offer. And the more valuable you make yourself, the more bits of valuable chunks come off of you and you can give them out and then people see that you're actually worth something and uh, which which actually is a nice lean into my my other mistake <laughs> I want to talk about and that was this um, I spent most of my time try to convince people a lot of my time in the beginning tried to convince people that what I was doing was right or what I was doing was okay I spent so much energy trying to get people to move over to my side of the of the um, the road because I was trying to almost convert them into becoming somebody who wanted to do what I did and you see that's a problem because when you try to convince somebody it, it it's going to become a problem for you later you know one of the things that I do when I go out on the rare occasions I do go out because I do go out every now and then and if I'm in a computer store or some something, I'll have a conversation with somebody and they'll say, what do you do for a living? And I have a very, very cheesy line that I say all the time, uh, mainly because I'm from South Africa and I, I am a six-figure owner in my country um, and I don't work for anybody. I use this line. And if you can come up with a, a cheesy, funny line that gets somebody's interest up, you, you won't need to convince somebody. You won't need to convince them. They'll just want to ask more questions, and you create curiosity. So I say to them, they'll say, what do you do for a living? And I say, well, I teach Americans how to make money online. And they look at me with a slight tilt and go, what do you mean? Oh, no, no, that's something I do. I, you know, uh, Americans want to make money online, and I teach them how to do it. And... Uh, but anyway, getting back to this, and they always seem to want to go back to what I was doing. And I, I purposely don't get them involved. I, I purposely don't engage them. I shrug them off, or I'll say, look, if you want to find out more, you can go to DaveRanica.com. I might have a card, or I might write it down and say, look, you can check me out online and see. And I, instead of trying to convince I create curiosity for people to look at what I have. When, If you can create curiosity, instead of trying to convince somebody, you will go a lot further. Convincing somebody is terrible. When, when, when somebody is interested and somebody wants what you have, blame gets taken away. Um, your responsibility gets taken away because they are interested in what you have to offer. And I'll tell you this much. When I first got hooked, when Ryan, my sponsor, um, my original mentor, got me in the system, I never once questioned, I never once questioned, like when, when, he, when he actually spoke to me, we got, I never once questioned whether it was legit or not, because I was so, I was so, um, I wanted this thing to work so badly that blaming him was out of the question. All right, I was blaming my computer and all of the other stuff, but I wasn't. I wasn't saying to him, "This is your fault," because I was so interested in what was allowing him to work online. And you know, when you start working online, and I'll tell you this much, and you might think I'm crazy, this is what's going to happen to you, because it's happening to me now. And four years ago, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who actually got into the online marketing uh, industry. And he said this to me, he says, Dave, I actually think I'm going to try and get myself a little part-time job because I am. I need some human interaction. This online work is great. I'm making money, but 
I want to interact with other people. And I, I really do understand what he's talking about now, because when you're online and you're working online all the time, you kind of miss the interaction of other people. And I don't need to work for anybody because I've worked really hard online and I've developed some really good habits. Uh, but when you start working online and it, it becomes part of your life, you want to interact with other people. And it's something I'm, I'm really looking at expanding about going out and doing something else as well because um, it allows me the freedom to do that. But getting back to my main point, as I digress, stop trying to convince people and create curiosity in what you are doing. Uh, so that, that's the best advice I can give you for that. So that was my second point. So let's go over to Pops, and maybe he's got something else he wants to share. And uh, go for it, Pops. When I started out, I um, I failed to use social proof, and because I started out, I didn't have any real personal social proof, and I was reluctant to use my company's social proof that they already had in place. Um, I don't know why. I can't explain why I did that, uh, whether I was just I don't know. I have no idea. I can't even imagine why. But I wasn't using their social proof to start out. And over and that held me back longer than it should have. When I started using their social proof, I started getting people attracted to me and then I was able to build up my social proof in that part of that was going to events and having pictures taken with the superstars or the big money people and the successful people that I could share while I was building my business to have social proof that I'm connected with leaders. And so that is very important. And the more you find social proof, start out using the companies and find a group that you can hang in. There's so many groups in, in Facebook now. In fact, most companies have their own Facebook group where you can interact and you can take screenshots of conversations that you have with mentors and the high money earners. And you can share that with for social proof that you're connected and that you're learning and you know the people, you know what you're doing, you have a valid company you're working with, and that that is a big key in creating a following um, for what where you want to go and what you're going to be able to accomplish. That's a very good point. I love that because um, very often one of the things I used to do, and going on what Pops was saying, is when I would uh, tell people about the potential they could do online, I used to refer to my mentor, Ryan. Uh, Ryan is a lot younger than I am, and I would say, you know, here's this kid making money online, and he lives in the States, and I, I want to be where he's at. And, uh, you know, I would use him as an example of somebody who succeeded. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a great way for you to do that, and often people will say to me, but, but what can I say? And you say, hey, you, just tell them you know of a South African a South African living in a third world country that's produced uh, an income where he can work online and not work for anybody. And th that's just a way that you can help progress. And social proof is incredibly valuable because when people see that, they go, wow, that's incredible. And if you word it just right, uh, um, it, it never fails. All right. Without saying, sounding braggadocious, and that's why we have this amazing team. And we talk about this one. We don't mention it that often, but we've got a, uh, you know, if you have a community that you're involved with, you can use people in that community as social proof to show them that this actually does work. Um, that's really, really important. Um, so with that being said, thanks, Pops, for that. And um, uh, Jamie, go with Jamie. A lot of people, when they come, in and they get in with the community they feel like they don't have anything to teach they don't have anything of value to give because they're new you know that's farthest from the truth you know because like our community that we have you have to do a video to get inside of our private community 
you know, and uh, just by you doing a video to get into that private community, you know how to do video more than what 90% of the people that are trying to figure out this online marketing thing, you know, and just getting in and setting up a system. If you follow the steps and set up the system, well, you know, like our system has six steps in it. If you've gone through them six steps, well, you already know how to set up a system. That's something you can teach somebody on how to set up. I mean, a lot of people don't realize the talents they have inside themselves until somebody points it out. You know, I've always known I'm, I'm good at computers, but I never thought about marketing my computer business until Dave pointed it out to me. When I did, it took off, you know, and actually this week was, has been my sl slowest week in the last two months. I think I've had one computer this week. You know, I've been averaging three or four computers a week. And then you don't really recognize what you're good at until you're around a, a group of people that want the same thing that you want. Then they start helping you out. You know, you help each other out and they start pointing out what you're good at, you know, and then you really realize, oh, I'm good at that, you know, and help you define what your why is, and what your passion is. And then you can start focusing on marketing to them. Uh, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> How about community? Yeah, and that's where the community is built for is to help grow leaders in the marketplace. You know, uh, that's what our, our, our big community, our private community does. We grow big leaders up. And, uh, you know, and a big leader don't always have to be a monetary leader. They can be uh, a, a leader that's good at training stuff training you on how to use a certain part of the system, you know, um, like funnels or blogs or uh, social media or something like that. You know, a good leader is willing to go out of his way to help anybody that's struggling. So that's my, my little uh, thing, because I always thought that I had to, um, that at first, you know, I thought I didn't have nothing to teach. And when I got to hang around you guys, you're like, Jamie, you got so much value. You just got to start giving it, you know. And when I start giving it, the more I gave, the more poured out of me. So <laughs> that's true. A lot of us don't know where our strengths are. A lot of us don't realize that we are far more than we're capable of doing. Uh, I remember my very first time Ryan invited me on as a guest on his hangout, and I was petrified. I was absolutely petrified. I, I didn't know what the heck to do. All I knew was what I had done so far and uh, that I was gaining momentum and I made more sales and then I got on his hangout again. And after a while, he started inviting me on. And I do remember <laughs> one time, I don't know if he was doing it on purpose or not, but he, he would always have to take a, a bathroom break every single time. Uh, he was on there for some reason, and he would leave me talking to about 100 people on the Hangout, and I'm sitting there with, with uh, I don't know what to say, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared out of my wits, and I, I don't know what to do. And he just encouraged me and encouraged me, and we had a great community that edged me along until he finally said to me, Dave, you need to start doing your own Hangout. He told me that. He said, you need to, do, you need to start doing your own Hangout and uh, I was scared. At, I could not believe how frightening that was. And I tried to, I tried to weasel my way out of. Okay, I'll ha have you on as a guest the first time round. He says, "No, you're doing it by yourself. You've got to do this on your own." And I was scared. I, I didn't know what to do. And then I finally did it. Uh, I finally got on there, and I, I did it, and I, I've never stopped. Um, because wow, that you have this great, yeah. Carry on. That sounds familiar. That's what you did to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Because that's ultimately what we have to do, is we have to go off and, and do our own thing and spread our own wings, and you learn from people until you can actually do it yourself. That's what you need to do. You need to constantly be pushing people to do something more than you used to. If you start getting comfortable, you need to start thinking, wait, wait, I don't want to get comfortable. Always have your back up against the wall so you're doing things that are pushing you out of your comfort zone. That, that if you're feeling a little bit awkward, that's a good sign. It means that you're stretching yourself and learning. So uh, I think we covered about three or four more points there. But with that being said, 
Uh, we'll go over to Katie. Anything you want to add to this line of mistakes that we've made? Yeah, I want to confirm that uh, not sharing what I learned helped me back the most. Because like what J Jamie was saying, I'm just confirming this that uh, more you give away, like all the value, um, like stuff that people can use, okay? What I was talking about earlier um, is, and what we're talking about earlier is becoming value in the marketplace, telling people that they can make this much money in so many times or this much, whatever, that's not useful. I mean, it's information that's great, but stuff that they can use right now. Because when you go out there and you're saying you're promising all this stuff, that you know you, you better deliver it right but people have to buy into that but where we're coming from when we mean by bringing value is sharing like three or five points of something that they could use right away so i didn't do that for the longest time um and i was just confirming that that uh once you start sharing the more you grow the more you want to learn and it becomes addictive and that's what jamie's talking about it's just it's just like more just spews out um and what i wanted to talk about is uh not writing goals was a huge huge mistake of mine uh i was told by day one to write down your goals uh to put a date on it like zig ziglar likes to say did you put a date on it did you write your goals did you write it down did you put a date on it <laughs> from born to win uh seminar but anyways um i never did i never did because i always didn't know a, I didn't know what I wanted because, B, I didn't think I was um, deserving enough. So that helped me back for the longest time until I finally got sick and tired of being where I was at, that I should be further ahead so I can have more training, be able to travel full time and go to seminars and meet all these awesome people, even on Facebook friends, you know, just, just meeting up with them. is just such a cool thing. So I wrote all this stuff down and I'm starting to check off the list, the goal list, which is amazing. There's new things that pop up like, hell yeah, I'm going to do that too. And you could check that off or something. Or for those of you who make lists anyways, have you ever wrote something on a checklist and already did it, but then you could check it off, right? <laughs> I've done that. But anyways, uh, the whole point is, is I never wrote go goals down for the longest time. And I think that was a really big mistake because there's something magical that happens in our brain that where if you focus on the stuff that you don't have, your brain, your subconscious mind is like, okay, so then you don't have it. Or God, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you don't have it. But if you ask the universe, you ask God, or you ask your subconscious mind that you actually don't ask, you tell them. You tell them that are all that stuff that this is what I want. This is what the day is going to smell like. This is what I'm going to hear when I'm at that point. This is what I'm going to feel like. This is who I'm going to be surrounding myself with. You write it all down with complete detail. Again, I was told this five years ago to do this and I never did it until about last year. I finally wrote it down and I went even more detailed this year and it's just amazing. It's just magical stuff so write down your goals and real quick pops like i told you katie i told you yeah i love that and that that is um comes to a very very important uh, you know one of the things that we tell a lot of people to do is not make it about the money and uh you know it's very easy to say that obviously because people are like what are you talking about? I want to, I want to start a business because I want to make more money. Ultimately, that's what people want to do in the end. But I will tell you this, and it's a little bit of a story uh, to let you know where I'm, where I'm coming from. So everybody kind of understands that when I first got started in this industry, I started out by trying to make videos. <laughs> I tried to make videos, and I got the skill set down where I could rank. Any video, you give me a video and I will rank it for you. It's a very simple process. It really is that. It's a dead easy thing to do. Uh, all you got to do is just um, follow a strategy. It's dead simple. Okay. Um, the next thing I learned was how to post on Craigslist. Um, even in South Africa, you can't post on Craigslist in the United States, but there are ways around that. 
back then at least. But in this process of me learning how to rank, learning how to make videos, learning SEO and all of that stuff, one of the things that I did for Ryan, my mentor, <clears throat> is uh, I kind of said, hey man, let me be your support guy. I'll be your support guy. And uh, anybody who's got any questions, just send them to me because he was getting overwhelmed by all of this stuff. And so he would, he set me up with, with an account, people would email me. And if somebody had a question, I would answer the question. And that got me in a very, very unique position because that force kind of forced me into a position of helping other people. Now, here's something interesting about Katie is that one of the skill sets that Katie has is she moderates and she does it very well. But while she moderates, she's helping people. And one of the reasons Katie is successful at what she does is because she's put herself in a position where she is helping other people. She's kind of forced into that by, by helping people along their journey. And I will tell you this, if you start thinking in terms of becoming support for people who are struggling, in your community, if somebody has a question, you find the answer and give it to them. If you if you if you want if you're going through the groups of people who are marketers and somebody's asking a question, you go out of your way to make a video and send them to them. And while you're at it, you put it on YouTube, you put it on 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 your blog, or whatever, but you give people answers. If you start doing that, assisting people, what you will find is that you will eventually get your focus off the money aspect of it. You know, we always tell you that when you get into a business, you've got to see it as an investment. You've got to see it like becoming a doctor, becoming a lawyer, becoming a teacher. You've spent thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to become educated so that you can have a skill set that allows you to be a doctor, but there's still no guarantee that you're going to get work. You've got to look at it in that same way. You've got to look at it as an investment in yourself so that you can become valuable. You can become support for the entire world. All right. So when people have a question, you are there to answer them. So one of the things that we encourage you to do all the time is to become part of the community so that you can become valuable to that community. And one of the ways that there are so many people that stick out in the community we have. You know, we've got Robert there who's puts in value all the time. We have Jamie who's constantly uh, teaching about uh, his skill set, especially with the fact that he he loves computers. We've got uh, we've got Katie who 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 goes to these events. We've got so many people who are literally trying to help other people. And when you get in that groove, when you get in that mode, it's kind of like going to the gym and working out. When you start doing your reps and you start getting into that zone of actually doing something that's helping you, you start to build muscle or lose weight because you're doing it on a consistent basis. And you've got to exercise that support muscle. That support muscle is the key to helping you move forward. Because I'll tell you what happens and what happened to me. When I started becoming support for that community, people started to look at me more. At one stage, people were starting to look at me more than Ryan because I was answering all the questions. I was, be I was becoming the it guy. I was becoming that person that people were focused on. And then what happened as a result of all of the videos I made and all of the, the answers I gave to people in the email, they would suddenly realize that, hey, this guy has something to offer. And that's when I lost complete focus of the money side of the business. And it's at that moment that you start to see results. And my, my progression in this industry didn't happen overnight. It took me about two and a half years of solid support, solid support where I became valuable to other people. And this is why we say, don't make it about the money, 
stop focusing on the money. Understand that whatever you're putting into your business, you that money goes to educating yourself so that you can become more valuable. So if you're learning something like if you're learning about autoresponders, or let's just say you're using get response, great autoresponder, right? If you're using get response and you suddenly come across a group who's using get response, why not go into that group and become the it person for answering all the questions so that people can look to you for answers? The same with learning about blogging, the same with learning about video, the same with that is a great strategy where you can actually insert yourself into communities where you become the answer person. And believe me, it's going to happen where you're going to be answering all these questions and then one day you're going to be minding your own business and someone is going to messaging you saying, hey, what's the best order responder to use? And you're going to say, well, get response, right? And then you're going to say, oh, here's my link. You can join. And they join you and you be, you want affiliate for them so you make some money. That's the type of thing that happens inside of a business. When you become the answer person for health and fitness, when people have a bunch of questions about becoming healthy and, and fit and, and all of that stuff, and then somebody reaches out to you and say, you know, I'm really battling with this and and, and can you give me some advice and say, well, I'm using this, this, and this, and this is helping me, and you send your link, you can sell your product. I promise you, becoming the support person changes everything because it takes the focus off the money. And I've said this throughout my life. I, used, I, I, I suffered with depression my entire life. And what got me out of depression was putting myself into a community where I became helpful for other people. Because, you know, I, I got a, a friend of mine who, who really, really struggles with, with self-image and, and all that stuff. And he suddenly got involved with a huge community where he became really good at solving a problem. He actually said to me, you know what? It really is refreshing to have people ask you for answers they come to you for answers and it changes the way that you think about yourself you start becoming full of self-esteem you you start becoming more confident you start making more um, for answers for people it really does change your perspective so I was just wondering if um, anybody else has something to add or or some mistakes I want to go through or or anything <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I want to add to uh, that's. I guess that's what we're made about. We're all about helping other people. We've done that all our lives, uh, all the way in school. You can't, you know, if some even in grade school, somebody comes up for some help, and you're, we're all typically willing to help. And I found that when actually a mistake. This I'll roll this into a mistake that I made when I went to an event. I would be kind of shy and uh, not very confident because I was new. I felt as though I had nothing to add. And then it dawned on me, I don't have to add anything because I know nothing, I have nothing to add. So why don't I ask questions? So I would approach uh, some of the leaders and ask questions and they are more than happy to help, as are all of us, willing and, and happy to help. It makes them feel better. I got the answers I needed, I felt better. And then I could pass that on there's nothing more embarrassing when you're at an event and you're standing around and somebody comes up to you and asks you a question because they're new but don't know that you're new and you don't have an answer for them. Uh, you know, you're kind of stumble bumming. But when you're engaged with speaking with somebody else by asking, no one's actually typically going to come up and, and ask you a question at that point. So you're safe from that. But you're learning something, and you're learning something you can pass on. And as Dave said, you can feel better about yourself by sharing it with other people. And that's, again, what we are all about as a human species. We're about helping other people. It would be chaos out there. And it's not. So that holds true and proof that we are. Well, you, you see it all the time. People are always helping people. Uh, pick something up. Um, 
help someone across the street. You see it all the time if you're aware of it anyway. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And it's a great to witness when people have that confidence enough and that they're willing to share with people that don't know things. And that helped me a great deal when I finally overcame that and decided to start asking questions of people. It was great. Thank you, Pops. And I, I will, I will also add um, something here. I, you know, uh, I mean, I hope you understand. It's important not to focus on the money, but it's as important not to focus on the products. Okay, so if you get what I'm saying here, so if you're just focusing on the products. You're also losing it. You're not focusing on the people, and that's Pops mentioned this, and I think it's a very, very good point. Ultimately, your 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 focus should be to support people, and as a result of supporting people, you can provide them with solutions in the form of products. But if you're just focusing on the product, if you're just focusing on on trying to set a shake, you know, because it's got so many you know calories and it's this and it's that. You're not reaching out to anybody. You're not solving a problem. You're not building a relationship. You're not connecting with people. And the truth of the matter is that your focus should be on people. It should not be on the product. It's a very, very um, interesting point, and uh, something that that I've definitely learned from. And thanks for bringing that up, Pops. It's a it's a very good point. And I love the fact that you say ask questions if you don't know. Right. So you ask questions. You keep on asking those questions, you're going to get answers. You're going to start start filling in those gaps in your life, right? And then you're going to be able to be the answerer for people. The answerer, if that's a if that's an actual word. The answerer. <laughs> the answerer. <laughs> okay. So Yeah, I'm like I'm like I'm like Jamie. I can't I couldn't get into the hangout chat because I am on a hotspot, but I don't know what the deal is. I couldn't access that. But I had to ask Katie who was able to. If there were any questions, and she said no, there were no questions, and so we must be doing a great job by explaining everything so explicitly that everybody gets it, and there are no questions. Well, there should be questions of some kind, um, and I I found that with myself too. I was reluctant to ask questions, or even show myself sometime in the hangout. But it's important to get yourself engaged, and we are the mentors. So that's actually a big. We that's happy a to answer. That's a good. That's a good point. And and maybe what we could ask the audience is, what is the biggest struggle they have, besides not making enough money? <laughs> okay, all right. I'm on, what is the biggest struggle they have in their business? What do they think is the biggest struggle they have in their business? What is the thing that stumps them? That that they think is uh, they have trouble with? Maybe we can answer some of those questions. <laughs> Maria's always got a question. <laughs> we love that about Maria. She's got always questions. That's awesome. Getting auto emails to load in order to respond to. <laughs> yes, you know. Let me let me say this because I think I think it can be a question. So there are, and I'll tell you I'll tell you my take on this. Um, about the fact that uh, people like I'm involved with a lot of businesses and I have a lot of autoresponders that go out that I have but I also have a newsletter I have a newsletter where somebody opts into my newsletter and I send out an email and I tell people that this is my newsletter and I will write all the emails myself I'm not going to send out an autoresponder for my newsletter because I want to interact with other people but because I have a lot of businesses that go on, I do have autoresponders and automated messages that go out teaching people about the progress about their business that they need to go through. So some training that everybody needs to understand. I do have those automated emails that go out, and a lot of marketers do that. But I also have a newsletter which I write personally, and I try to do that every single day. All right, so that is the big... I uh, think that I have here now. Maybe Katie's got a different take on that, and and uh, I'd like to hear what she has to say. If you, if well, you Maria want to is actually asking a really great question. She says, "If you don't understand it all, 
what should the question be? Start over, please. Wow. I mean, it's if a valid question. Understand it. I say um, go to your mentor and um, and a mentor, just to clarify, is someone who is currently at where you want to be, find out how they got there and uh, have that strategy and work that strategy until you get there. So with the continuation of uh, doing the, being the mentor, being like, yeah, you got it, you know, set your goal. I will, I if I said to Jamie, if I asked you this question, if somebody was brand new in the computer, they, they had no idea what a computer was, um, and they asked this question, what is binary? <laughs> What is binary? Like what is binary? Yeah, you know, so 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 what is binary? And I mean it's not something you can just you can convey that information very, very quickly. I mean you can say it's a computer language, ones and zeros. I would I would usually say binary is the code the computer talks in. And when they glaze over, I say it's not something you really need to worry about. You need to just start with the basics, learn how to get on the internet, learn how to set up an email. And then, you know, learn take little chunks at a time. Learn how to do it a little bit at a time. Um, and yeah. you know, that's what that's kind of what I'd say to Maria. You know, if you feel like you're stuck at somewhere, you know, and it's good to do this occasionally. Is go back to the basics. Go back and go through the startup, uh, your company's startup, your startup plan. Go through the startup plan again. You know, you may have missed something that you didn't see the first time. Uh, Go ahead, Kate. This is um, something that uh, I recognize in myself because I did this when I was new-ish. I was like, okay, I've been in this industry for like over two years. Like, where the frick is my money and why am I not doing what I want to do and being on the beaches of the world and all yada, yada, yada. So she definitely put in here what she just put in the comments, something that I used to say was, well, you don't know what you don't know. So don't create, this is what I got to say to you, Maria, is don't get hung up on the stuff that you don't know and start working with the stuff that you do know. You're a very talented woman. You know your shit. And it's time to take all of the stuff that you are very good at and work with that. Because the stuff that you don't know that you don't know, that'll just show up and all of a sudden you're just going to know it. But you have to go through and work the process on the things and focus on your talents that you do have and because you're really good at video right okay and you're really good at um, you know, she's really good at explaining things and asking good questions and so uh, just keep good doing reviews that you I've seen you do um, and start keep learning new stuff all the time and then just turn that around and share that with others um, nonstop that's what I would say so just focus on the stuff that you do know. Yeah, it's, and I mean, educating yourself and hearing something over and over and over again will help you as well. I mean, if you don't understand, if I don't understand something, I just keep on going through it myself or looking at somebody else's point of view so they can help me understand something better. I don't, uh, and you've written something here called unconscious incompetence and it's you want to reach the stage of unconscious competence that's the stage you want to reach when you're doing something it's like driving a car all right when you when you first get started with a car it's awkward and you go through these stages until you reach a stage of unconscious conscious uh, unconscious competence where everything just happens automatically you don't need to be there immediately but right now you're going through these stages where you're learning stuff one at a time Yeah, uh, unconscious competence can also you can relate it to like being a mother. When one of your kids cries, you automatically pick them up to find out what's wrong with them. You know, and you're gonna just you're gonna look and try to find out why they're crying. You know, and that's just a natural instinct, and that's what you're looking for. And you have to get good at a particular skill. You know, we're all good at particular skills. 
and you need to focus on that particular skill like Katie was saying you're good at certain things stay with what you're good at and master them and then the other stuff will come as you master the skills you're good at cool. and i'm just seeing we're on the top of the hour right now and uh, i was just wondering if perhaps what we should do for next week is answer some questions that you you people in the in the uh, audience are asking um, if you have some questions you want us to on, answer, go ahead and prepare some questions for us next week. All right, so we're giving you a week, all right? So you can think of the most difficult question. If we don't know the answer, we will say we don't know and we'll get back to you. But I think it's a good idea that we can have a Q&A section next week for some questions you might have, some tough ones that we can work through and perhaps give you some steps to overcoming those obstacles. So what does everybody on the panel think before we say goodbye? Um, we talked a lot about mentors or a little bit about mentors and Katie mentioned it and I'm going to reiterate and that is when you're looking for a mentor, make sure that mentor is already where you want to get to. Do not try to find a mentor who is not doing any better than you or is even equal to you. Find someone who is a step up, two steps up or whatever because they'll help you grow. The other ones don't know what they don't know either so they can't help you. So have a great week, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Have a great one. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jamie, you want to you um, end off with something and move on to Katie? I think a Q&A for next week, the whole show being a Q&A, that, that's an awesome idea. We're long overdue for one now. <laughs> awesome. Katie? I like it. I can't wait for next week now. I mean, I always could. I'm just like, I'm extra excited now. <laughs> cool, excellent. So let that be some homework for you guys. All right. So, so carry on with your marketing work. If you come up with any obstacles that you're struggling with that you want to, it could be anything. It could be, I don't know how to start my video. I don't know how to end my video. I don't know what to put in my video. I don't know how to start a blog. I don't know what to put in the blog. How do I get content? It could be anything. Um, go and find out some some difficult questions you can ask us and then perhaps we can help you out with that and if we don't know the answer we will get back to you all right that's one of the things we want to do and we will get back to you we'll just make it up yeah. i'm just kidding <laughs> we'll just make it up. <laughs> all right well, so yeah we won't make it up <laughs> well, i was but, gonna um, i was gonna say uh, those of you who are in our saturday workshop you know don't hesitate until next week to ask a question make sure you ask in our workshop chat Facebook chat that you ask it and and we can also bring it up then next week too. So and if you're in our workshop group, ask it as soon as you can and we'll figure it out. But we'll also bring it to the table at uh, next Monday. If there's like a lag in questions, we'll certainly bring it up for those that aren't part of the workshop. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. So with that being said, we will sign off now. We will see you. And don't forget, don't forget uh, Wisdom Wednesday on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. You want to be there. Uh, don't forget Jamie's Hangout on Thursday and uh, Maria and Sonia on Tuesday at, I always forget this time. Is it 4 p.m. Eastern? I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern. Is it 4 p.m. Eastern? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. You can put the, the time there um, for you guys to get there. And for those of you who are part of our workshop as well, Saturday we'll be having a workshop at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We'll see you there. You have a great day. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Cheers.